Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at ChainTUTS.com. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about understanding transactions by understanding the concept of UTXOs, how transactions are constructed with inputs and outputs, and how change works. So let's get started by first understanding the concept of a UTXO or unspent transaction output. So when you actually look at your address balance for a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, what you're actually seeing is UTXOs or unspent transaction outputs that are owned or associated with your receiving addresses in your wallet. When you receive some Bitcoin or some Litecoin or some Digibytes, what actually happens is the sender's transaction creates a new UTXO that is owned by your receiving address. And what that means is there's a, a special script called a locking script that is put on that UTXO that can only be unlocked by using your address's private keys. Now the ins and outs of transaction scripts are uh, beyond the topic of this video, but that is something that I've discussed in other videos. And the important thing to understand is that UTXOs are again owned by your address and therefore only can be unlocked by your private keys. So let's talk then about the concept of inputs and outputs. When you actually create a Bitcoin transaction to send coins to somebody else, here's how this actually works within the transaction. The transaction is constructed by first consuming inputs, uh, which are UTXOs that are owned by your wallet. So if your wallet has some Bitcoin in it, it has these essentially digital dollar bills called UTXOs. And the transaction will consume uh, however many UTXOs it needs to get at or above the amount that you are spending in this transaction. And then new UTXOs are created as transaction outputs. And those UTXOs go to the receiver, they go to uh, back to you in the form of change, and there's also the concept of minor fees, but that's not actually a UTXO, and we'll get to that in a little bit. So let's talk then about this concept of change, and this is something that you may have not encountered or may not understand if you've never actually looked underneath the hood at a Bitcoin transaction that you've done before. Again, UTXOs actually behave like a digital form of dollar bills. When you uh, go to create a Bitcoin transaction, these UTXOs have to be consumed in their entirety as inputs. It's much like if you go to the cashier at a store and want to buy an item for $15. You can't take a $20 bill out of your wallet, tear off a quarter of it, and give the remaining three quarters to the cashier as $15 worth of value. It just doesn't work that way you have to consume that $20 bill in its entirety in that transaction. But then the cashier will give you $5 back in the form of change. And in the case of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, that would be the equivalent of giving you a, exactly a $5 bill back in change. Now, minor fees are not UTXOs. And that's an, another interesting concept that you may not understand if you're looking at this on a block explorer for the first time. Rather, what minor fees are, is they are simply the sum of all the outputs minus the sum of all the inputs. So whatever is left over that is not specified as a new UTXO uh, in the transaction is going to be sent to the miners as a mining fee. So let's actually look at a concrete example of how this works. And we'll do this with uh, one uh, fairly popular UTXO blockchain, which is Digibyte. Let's say you have 500 Digibytes in your wallet, and that's in one UTXO. So at some point along the line, somebody sent exactly 500 Digibyte to your wallet in a transaction. Maybe a friend sent it to you, or maybe you got it from uh, an exchange where you bought it. 
but there is one 500 digibyte UTXO in your wallet. And in this case, we want to send a 250 digibyte to a friend, uh, which will be the receiver in this transaction. Here's what this transaction actually creates and does. First, the transaction creates a new output, a new UTXO, that is owned by the receiver's digibyte address. And that UTXO is for the 250 digibyte that we want to send them. Now, we still have 250 digibyte left over. So we don't want that digibyte to just disappear, and that's not what it does. What the wallet will do then is it's going to create, uh, let's say in this example, a 249 digibyte change UTXO. And this will generally go back to a different uh, address that is still owned by your wallet, which is called a change address. Change addresses are actually derived um, from your seed phrase much in the way that your external receiving addresses are. But the BIP44 standard specifies that this set of change addresses is different than your external receiving addresses. Regardless though, it's an address that your wallet owns and the funds are coming back as change into your control. Now, what about that one digibyte that is left over? So we consumed 500 digibytes in its entirety. We created a 250 digibyte uh, UTXO output for our receiver and a 249 digibyte uh, UTXO as change. That one digibyte left over does not go into a new UTXO in the transaction. It's simply left off entirely, and the digibyte software will uh, read this one remaining digibyte as uh, a minor fee. So we consumed an entire 500 digibytes as an input, and we only created 499 digibyte as outputs specified in the transaction. That one digibyte left over will go to the miners to reward them for securing the blockchain. And this works the exact same way on Bitcoin, on Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, and other blockchains that use this UTXO model. So those are some of the blockchains that I use and talk about frequently, and there are many others out there, surely, that use this UTXO model. A notable outlier in uh, some of the top, most popular cryptocurrencies is Ethereum. Ethereum actually uses an account model, which is much more akin to what you're used to uh, with your bank account. The Ethereum blockchain keeps track of state changes in the forms of withdrawals and deposits, from an account and keeps track of that overall balance rather than keeping a set of unspent transaction outputs that are associated with addresses. So this tutorial again has been a discussion of how UTXOs, inputs and outputs, and change works. So now hopefully you have a better understanding of what's actually happening under the hood when you create a cryptocurrency transaction. So next time you go to send a friend some Bitcoin Cash or some Digibyte or some Bitcoin, maybe take that transaction ID in your wallet and put it into a block explorer. And you can then see how that transaction was actually constructed. So take a look and see if you can figure out which UTXO belongs to the receiver, which ones came back to you and change, and how the overall mining fee was calculated. As always, there's a written article on the Chain Tutorials website that accompanies this tutorial, and I have a link to an actual Digibyte transaction in a Block Explorer that you can check out and uh, try to understand that transaction construction for yourself. As always, I want to thank you very much for listening to this tutorial, and I hope you and your families are staying safe and well.